What's up and welcome to Surgeon Ahead. Today we have several stories, starting with Elon providing an update on the full self-driving timeline, along with the subscriptions that are coming to the app. Green the Only speculates on Hardware 3 possibly not having enough compute for the full self-driving models. Users indicate that maybe with the cabin camera they're seeing less autopilot nags. The Model S Plaid wins the Pikes Peak hill climb and a little bit of FUD around Tesla software updates. So stick around and we'll dig into these. Okay, for our first story today, we have Elon Musk replying to a tweet from Holmar's catalog where Holmar's asked FSD subscriptions, beta nine, and Elon replies, I'm driving Alpha 9, but we need to fix some obvious issues before releasing Beta 9. Hopefully, next week, FSD subscription capability could be turning on via the Tesla app. Hopefully, we see these coming soon. It's the uh, first update we've had in quite a while from Elon. And his timelines do seem to be getting shorter and shorter. But there's still a lot of non-committal words in that particular tweet and i guess we'll have to see how close they actually are i for one i'm excited and i'm hoping that this is for real however for our next story we have green the only who seems to be quite a bit less optimistic than i am uh green tweets i'm back what did i miss other than tesla discovering multi-node computing is much harder than they originally thought uh, to which Dr. Im Kodin replies talking about Dojo, and Green says, No, the FSD beta slipping because they run out of compute on a single node, but doing two nodes is much harder than everything running locally. Um, and, and there's a bunch more in this thread. Um, Alexander Adrianov, MD, MBA, asks, Running out of compute? I thought they had massive headroom. I guess this computer vision thing is harder than they originally planned. And Green replies, the massive headroom evaporated circa mid-2020 by my estimates. Um, and then Matthew Santoro asks, did something happen? What makes you say it's specifically because they've run out of compute on a single note? Also, is there anything to suggest Tesla will soon, soon stop running the chips in parallel to double the compute? Green said, they've never run in parallel in the same stuff on both nodes for redundancy. And now that they are out of compute, they are trying to run different stuff in parallel and redundancy is out of the window, even if it was originally planned. Uh, to which bug not found exception asks, hmm, you profile it or some internal source? And Green says, I've been tweeting about the extended compute development for some time, and now Elon tweeted about obvious bugs that still need to be stamped out. This is the area where most of the bigger development was seen, so this is where the bugs are now. And yes, it's hard to do it. And for the last part here, I have no idea what this means, but sounds cool. Can you explain to me like I'm five? To which Green replies, remember that tweet from Elon a year or two ago where Elon tweeted a video of some fight people entering ring one by one and some such, and then another where there were like multiple? That's good enough high level view. Um, so and this is a lot of speculation from Green's part. Um, I know he's an expert and he knows a lot about these things, but to definitively say, the bugs obviously mean that they're out of compute. I don't know. It's kind of a lot to take in. Um, however, I did do a video a while ago after the quarter one conference call where I picked out Elon saying something that kind of piqued my interest, where it seemed as though he was suggesting that they were having issues with compute on their nodes. And it, it was in relation to going vision only. So I speculated that maybe stopping doing sensor fusion was to conserve compute resources on the hardware but for me that was just speculation and picking apart what he was saying i have even less data than green the only but elon seems to be speculating that it should be out very soon whereas green seems very skeptical of the entire thing so anyway i guess we'll see hopefully we have the full self-driving beta like elon is speculating in a week or so okay so our next story is on autopilot nags and here we have Tux453 summing up the, the video up above, which uh, if you're interested, you should watch. And it says, it comes down to confidence that you're paying attention. At night or when blinded, the drive was around 19 seconds. And with some confidence in tracking your eyes, it was around 25 seconds. And with sunglasses that are easier for the camera to track, it has more confidence you're looking in the right direction. It was 66 seconds. So all of these were the amount of time between nags from autopilot. 
um, and wearing sunglasses where it's easy for the computer to figure it out. 66 seconds, that's a long time. I I'd love to see it be even longer than that. In fact, maybe no nag at all. Let's see level three on the interstates. Come on, Tesla. No, no. I mean, right now, that's fantastic that we're seeing these improvements with it. I'm a little sad that I won't be seeing this in my Model X, but maybe at some point I can buy something that'll allow them to track my eyes so I could do level three. I don't know. It'd have to be a complete solution before I'd be in for that, though, I guess. So um, we'll see. Um, and it's good to see that they are making progress. Um, this poster seems to believe the nags will become even less as they move on. And as the algorithm improves, hopefully you won't even have to, <laughs> you won't have to wear sunglasses for it to get better. Um, I guess we'll see. Uh, but I think that's great news for potential level three on highways and stuff in the near future. Tesla's not promising this, but seems likely they could get there. So the next big story I have, uh, Randy Pope's driving the unplugged, should say plaid Model S, takes first in exhibition class at Pikes Peak. Um, and he did it by quite a healthy margin. Um, so there are several videos on this. Um, I found them fascinating. Um, watching how quickly that car moves. To me, it looked awesome. I'd love to get behind the wheel of a Plaid someday and see how that goes. It's, it's awesome to see that the uh, this won the race. And uh, the car was amazing, but I'm sure that having Randy Popes as your driver helps a little bit as well. And then for our final story here, and this was all over the media, in which they talk about Tesla to recall nearly 300,000 China-made Model 3 and Model Y vehicles. However, if you look here, owners are not required to return their vehicles as it would be remote online software recall. So Tesla is if showing a software update. And this update is to add chimes for traffic aware cruise control for when you activate and deactivate it. So in my opinion, this is just pure FUD. I can't absolute 100% clickbait. This is terrible. This is why we have distrust in the media in so many corners of the internet. I'd like to see these things go away. Report it accurately. I, I, this could be a positive story. Tesla is able to fix nearly 300,000 China-made Model 3 and Model Ys with a simple over-the-air update instead of making it sound like there's a giant issue with Tesla vehicles and they have to bring them in and fix them. So... Anyway, I know this gets more clicks, still doesn't make it right. Very much dislike these kinds of stories. So that's all I have to say on that particular topic. So as I was getting prepared to edit the video, um, I saw a little bit more information and a story developing that I thought might be fun to cover on this video. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that in here. We'll go ahead and start by this tweet from Dirty Tesla, um, who is a, a YouTuber and someone who's been testing the full self-driving beta for a while. Uh, they recently sold their Model 3 to get a Model Y uh, that had the vision only. Um, and so after his first 500 miles or so on the uh, Y, he went ahead and did these tweets here. Um, so it starts off 500 miles with the no radar Y so far and Tesla vision is impressive. Slowing for stopped slowed cars is very good slash gentle. Rain performance is great so far. Video tomorrow morning which exists now, uh, and lane changes are freaking perfect. I dare say it's better than before. But man, I really need 80 miles per hour. Can we please bump that boy by five miles per hour? Ha ha. Follow distance three is fine for me, although I used to always be on one or two. I'll go ahead and concur with that. I also use one almost exclusively. Elon Mahan replied to this and said, production release update coming this week which includes raising max speed to 80 miles per hour. Sorry, 75 mile per hour limit was done as precautionary measure, turned out to be unnecessary. So almost immediately after that, we see this version 2021.4.18.10, and you can see here the release notes for it. Uh, we get emergency lane departure back, and we also get Smart Summon. Um, and they're also in this thread talking about, looks like they removed the speed restrictions for the Vision vehicles. Um, and it's a good thread. They have some more information on that earlier today. Um, Kevin Smith went ahead and tweeted out, at Tesla update 2021.4.8.10, installed for Vision Y, restored Smart Summon, Lane Departure Assistance, 
80 mile per hour cap up from 75, still limited compared to 90. Um, and to that, he's are talking about the standard uh, radar version of autopilot will allow you to go up to 90 miles per hour. Auto high beams enabled with autopilot, but can be disabled when unwanted. Overall feels amazing, more feedback later. Um, all of that is fantastic news. Um, it, it'll be nice if it can get up to 90 for autopilot, but at least for where I'm at, 80, 80 makes it usable. It would now be something I would not be afraid to install in my car because the interstates are 75 here, everybody drives 80. Going 75 would just make me feel uncomfortable, but at 80, I'd feel okay with that. Um, and then the other big deal is being able to disable the auto high beams when on autopilot. I can get why it might be necessary, but they just don't seem good enough for me to want to have them on at all times. And quite frankly, when I'm on the interstate driving day or night, I really don't want my high beams on ever. Um, it's just going to go into the back window and blind people in their mirrors. It's I think it's rude. So I, yeah, I don't, I don't want auto high beams on when I'm on an interstate. So thankfully these have been disabled. Um, I'll be curious to see if disabling them at night, uh, causes any, um, issues or places any other restrictions, or if they can still be disabled at night or if they can only be disabled during the day. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll like to see more details on that. Hopefully it's just, Hey, if you disable them, it's fine. Um, that would be, I think the best, possible option but anyway um i don't want to lab on for too long here uh it's great news that they are fast iterating on the vision only autopilot um this is taking away many of the restrictions that were had initially um there was another tweet i saw out there where someone mentioned that this update was supposed to also fix sentry mode on vision only cars, but I have not seen any confirmation on that yet. Anyway, glad to see improvements here. Hopefully this means we're ready to see the full self-driving beta from the vision only stack, because this seems like the limitations that were holding back the vision only autopilot from working well are finally here. Okay, so there you have it. Um, several stories today. I thought I'd try something new. Um, I traditionally just do single topic videos, but it's been kind of difficult to come up with big stories about Tesla. So I thought I'd try just touching on a bunch of smaller topics that have come over the last couple of weeks and see how that goes. So let me know if you like it or if you want me to return to the uh, more in-depth individual videos, um, which I plan on doing still anyway, but um, I feel like I'll be able to produce videos more frequently if I just touch on a bunch of smaller stories rather than always looking for that big story, which I can kind of extract out and really pull a lot of content out of. So anyway, uh, let me know what you think. This has been Brett with Surging Ahead. And if you like this video, go ahead and like it. If you want to see more videos from me, hit the subscribe button. But thanks for watching and have a great day.